I wanted to go ahead and share my experiences with dry fire practice or at least uh, basically how I uh, conduct dry fire practice uh, from my experience. Uh, I've been through you know basically doing too much, doing too little and I think now I've found somewhat of a, a fine balance and so I wanted to go ahead and walk you guys through it. I know I did dry fire 101 but I wanted to go ahead and get into detail about uh, the proper way to conduct dry fire practice because it really is an art form. We're going to be doing one of the most complex things which is conditioning our body to do something that's very unnatural, moving one finger that biologically wants to have the assistance or sympathetic movement of the other fingers to assist. So, the first thing is, let's go ahead and define dry fire practice. Dry fire practice is basically, you're going to be, um, <clears throat> you're going to be sh shooting without actually feeling recoil. Now, recoil is an essential uh, element to our practice and, and conditioning ourselves to actually uh, be able to get used to um, doing this unnatural thing that we're going to be practicing at perfecting, right? Or getting better at. So, dry fire practice is going to be uh, taking on uh, many of the elements that aren't recoil based that we can actually kind of sympathetically uh, prepare for uh, more properly handling recoil and that's going to be all the stuff that it takes to pull the trigger without moving the gun because at the end of the day uh, the recoil control part of it is basically not anticipating the recoil not trying to necessarily fight it but to basically time you getting back on target and using that little jerk of emotion to get back on target as soon as possible so anyways we'll leave that to the side so the requirements here are going to be first off and most importantly mental focus and then of course you're going to need gear and that's obviously going to be a gun I would I highly recommend snap caps do not sit there and dry fire your pistol like literally where you have nothing in the chamber get snap caps and you're going to wear out, like if you get the A-Zoom, that's one I recommend because it has a little rubber or polymer uh, backing on it. You also have things like lasers, like uh, G-Sight lasers or some other trainers where it'll shoot a, a, a red laser and it has a polymer backing on it to protect your firing pin. I highly recommend that. So, anyways, you're also going to need targets. I recommend a variety from silhouette, life-size silhouette targets, maybe just a paper plate, uh, thumbtacked on a wall, sticky notes, thumb, thumbtacked on a wall, an index card, a variety of different targets. Maybe you want to cut out a piece of paper that's about, you know, the uh, <clears throat> width of your thumb and about as long as a uh, paper plate. That way you actually have to stay in a uh, line, do it vertically or horizontally challenge yourself. And that goes into um, the next thing. So I believe uh, from my time of <clears throat> conducting dry fire practice, I found that the most rewarding and um, <clears throat> best way to get results and continue practicing without feeling like it's completely boring is to use and incorporate and adapt flow training into your, um, your practice regimen. So Basically what that is, is uh, you, flow training is finding that perfect balance between stress and, uh, or anxiety, stress or anxiety, whatever you want to call it, and you know, your relax, uh, your boredom basically. So it's not so hard that you want to give up, but it's not so uh, you know, easy that you're just like, this is no fun. You have a bit of a challenge you have moments of stress, which is basically an example of this, is to play little games and also competing maybe against someone else or maybe competing against a loose time or whatever, building on a timer. Um, some other things is impossible tasks. Try to draw within a half second and just see how fast you get, see if it like helps you or whatever. Just have fun with it. Um, Imitate some things like if you want to imitate the movie Collateral where he draws and shoots. Imitation can be a fun way, you know, LARPing or whatever. It's still a fun way. It these are activities that are proven to actually help us um, stay in a flow state. It's a game to us, and we're still constantly building it. We're just having fun with it, and that's a good way to get accustomed to the firearm and uh, the process that we need to. Um, 
go through in order to basically um, advance and uh, get better at doing this thing that's unnatural. So anyways, uh, the next thing that's vital is that you do take breaks and that you do do uh, your stretches because I, I will tell you that breaks are going to be vital for your forearms, especially if you're working with double actions and your or even striker fired pistols. You are going to be gripping, you should be gripping the pistol uh, like you would if you were firing. So you want to grip it nice and tight. You are going to need to give your forearms breaks. And also you're going to want to stretch out your hands. And the stretching is more for your joints in here and uh, the bone bone-on-bone -bone contact that you can risk and carpal tunnel that you can get from uh, doing this activity. So you want to stay away from that. You want to take plenty of breaks. Also, your neuromuscular um, status in doing this uh, can actually be harmed over time and you can actually uh, develop problems if you uh, are constantly dry firing and putting your maximum into it. You can overtrain physically not necessarily mentally. So the next thing is your mental prep. Uh, you want to mentally prep, um, you know, visualize, refresh your attitude, <clears throat> stay in the game, have fun with it. So that kind of goes with flow training a little bit, is have fun with it, uh, see what you need to do, and uh, kind of let your ego aside and refresh, meditate if you wish, whatever. Um, also, I recommend and this kind of goes with the flow training and uh, competing and stuff. Do varying speeds. Go very slow to test your discipline, uh, to test your mental attitude. Um, and also, you know, uh, go a little bit uh, faster and uh, push the limits and just see where you're at. Uh, but normally, uh, like 90% of the time, I would recommend just going at normal speed. That's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, you know, a comfortable speed where you're, uh, where you're good. And... Typically, if you just stick with that, you'll find yourself getting faster. You'll be like, you know what, I can cut corners or whatever. You're not really pushing it. You're just going with the flow. It's like, yeah, I can do better. I can do better. I can do better. Like if you're doing draw practice or whatever. Uh, so uh, I would say that the last thing is something I already reiterated where you're taking breaks and stuff, but rest plenty. Uh, take a day off. Uh, take a couple days off. And just sit there and mentally prep, mentally go through what you're going to do, plan, and all this other stuff. Uh, don't be sitting there constantly fondling your firearms. Give your physical, um, your physical part a break. And that's what I'm in the middle of doing is giving my physical part a break. I'm not even touching anything today. Uh, but <clears throat> unless I'm going to carry it, you know, I'm not really touching it. But uh, with all that said, uh, that's how I conduct dry fire practice. Uh, even when I go to the range, I, I, do, I do it as verification of my dry practice. So I give myself a task that I need to complete, and this is usually in the form of a course of fire. Um, maybe it's more physical than it is um, mental, which mental would be something like a one to five course of fire where you're basically trying to see that you can actually put multiple rounds on target accurately. And it's more of a mental game of your ability to focus. And also the physical aspect where you're actually pulling the trigger without moving the gun. But it's more mental than uh, physical, I think, because the focus part is very big. So also the mental prep <clears throat> uh, mental prep part of it is also uh, getting your mind in tune and focused. So basically you're in tune with what your body's doing and what your mission is uh, as far as this practice routine. So with all that said, go ahead and leave a comment below on what you do. Uh, anything that you've learned over time, but uh, uh, with all that said, there's a lot of techniques and a lot of ways that people uh, do things, but I think that being mentally prepared and having, a, having kind of a philosophy of training is and practice is a good thing, and I just wanted to share mine, so kind of in addition to my dry fire practice series, but thanks a lot for watching, and you guys have a good one.